What's up guys? Dana Lynn Bailey here to bring you a dumbbell only back day. I think out of all the different workouts, I think back day is a little bit of struggle. It's like how, what? I just, I got rows and rows and some more rows. So today I'm bringing you a dumbbell only back day that is coming from my DLB daily dumbbell only program. If you're interested, maybe you're training at home, your gym's still closed. Don't worry, I got you. I got home workouts that are body weight only if you have no equipment at home. I also have a dumbbell only. And then I got my gym friends that still have gyms available to them. So we got three different styles of training for you. Today, I'm gonna take you through a dumbbell only back day. Click that link below and then go check out danalynnbailey.com. the first exercise because I love shoulders so much we're actually gonna start with a little rear delt tricep um, so the first two exercises are very very similar I just changed the way my elbows move um, so that I can keep doing reps so we're going to do a bent over dumbbell fly so your elbows will be in a nice fixed position and then how you bring them up um, it's completely up to you if you want to keep your palms facing that whole time. So I always tell you what I like, but we're all different. And sometimes we feel things a little bit differently. Um, so how I do my reverse dumbbell flies. So feet shoulder width apart. You want a nice flat back. Okay, bend your knees. So I start with my palms facing. And then as I come up, I actually make them face backwards because for me, I get a little better contraction when my pinky is up. So I'm twisting, pinky up, thumb almost like pointing backwards. So I get a little bit better contraction, but again, everyone's different. So if you want to keep them this way, that's totally fine. So we're going to start with the first part and this is like anywhere from like eight to 12 reps. So you say like a 10 to 12 rep range, uh, depending on what weights you have at home. If you only have really little weights, then do more. So I always suggest doing more. If you can do more, do more. So we're going to start with our dumbbell flies. So starting here, try to get like just a little second hold at the top. And then as I tire, so maybe I do 10 to 12, if I can try to get a couple more reps, I'm going to switch almost into like a wide row. It's going to look, I don't know what it's going to look like on film, but I'm going to be bending my elbows a little bit more. And when I come up, my elbows bend and then my arms straighten. With the flies, your arm stays in like a fixed position. So elbows slightly bent and then it stays in that fixed position the whole time when i switch to the wide rows you're going to be pulling up here nice and wide pretend if you had a barbell that barbell would be like hitting you like across your collarbone so elbows super wide and then you're going to bring them together so whoop, whoop. And I use the same weights for those. So whatever that is in your 10 to 12 rep range, you just keep going. So then you'll go another like eight to 10 with the wide rows. And then just to finish it all out, I grab just a nice light band and we're just doing band pull apart. So from the side, you're just stretching it as far as you can. So obviously the closer in makes it harder. And then you can also double it up. So if you have a, a, I actually have a great selection of bands. I just chose, I actually like to do this, the smaller one and then double it up. And then you're just stretching it, hold for a second. And then when I come back, I'm not releasing. I'm gonna keep tension on the band the whole time. So come back, stretch, go as far as you can. And then when I come back, I still have tension on my shoulders. So one, two, three, four, 
Then from behind. And we're going 12 to 15 there. So four sets, 10 to 12 flies, going right into a wide row. That you can just go to failure as many as you can. And then 12, 12 to 15 with your reverse or your band pull aparts. Next set, um, we're doing pull-ups, and I am suggesting you do assisted pull-ups. So even if you're really, really good at pull-ups, I want these slow and super duper strict. So I'm even doing an assisted pull-up. I'm just using a rubber band. So place one foot or two feet in the rubber band. I just usually do one. We're doing wide overhand to get nice wide lats. And I want the same pace up as you do down. So if you're doing a two second up, so one Mississippi, two Mississippi, hold at the top for a one second count. You're doing one Mississippi, two Mississippi down. So these are same pace up and down. So it's not up fast and slow down or up slow and fast down. <laughs> so I want same pace throughout the whole range of motion. So that's why I'm suggesting the assisted pull up or the assistance. Um, Cause these are gonna be, take a lot longer to do 10 pull ups than you could just repping them out. So hands out a little bit further than your shoulders. You're gonna come down and then you're just pulling up nice and slow. So one mississippi two mississippi up hold together now if you notice when i come to the very very top to hold to to the to hold at the top i'm actually putting myself into hollow body so if you've been following any of my workouts we do, do a whole lot of especially core exercises using hollow body so you're basically going to bring your feet in front of you and crunch down on your abs and that's what's going to keep you nice and still so and bonus you get a little extra ab workout doing pull-ups what you do abs doing pull-ups yes so at the top i want you to bring your feet out in front of you and it's going to replicate what a hollow body looks like so hollow body on the ground your feet are off the ground hands are off the ground or upper back and arms are off the ground so hold at the top for one second, and then we're doing the same pace down. So one Mississippi, two Mississippi. So feet come out in front, and then we're going one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Same pace up. Same pace down. And we're doing 10 to 12 reps of that. If you need to take a break in between, that is also totally okay. And then since the band is there, we're gonna use that band and we're just going to do some high rows. So I like to grab up a little bit to add a little extra resistance and then take a step back. And then you're just pulling back nice and high towards your shoulders, elbows wide. And since we're using band work, this isn't very heavy, you're gonna have that constant tension which is nice but i want you to focus on i can't like talk to you guys without my arms I want you to focus on bringing that back and then holding for a good two second count so every rep one two and then release so today's name of the game is going to be slow and steady Some heavier stuff. 
So these, I call these dead rows. Not death row. Well, it's kind of like death row, but dead rows. So we're doing dumbbell dead rows. You can also do this with a barbell if you prefer. So we're combining a bent over barbell row with a deadlift. So normally when you deadlift, you're coming from here and you're standing it up. Your arms are nice and straight. So you're not moving your arms. It's all hips forward, bending and straightening, but your arms are not doing anything. They're just levers. They're just pulling weight up, but you're using your legs to do it. Now, a barbell row is the exact opposite. So now our legs are bent and we aren't bending and straightening. This is all back. So now we're gonna combine those into my famous dead row. So we're gonna do a combination of pull uh, a deadlift. So you start with your deadlift and as you come up, you're going to row the weight up. So we're gonna to try to stick to an overhand grip because we have some other exercises where I want you doing a neutral grip and a close grip. So I try to differentiate all the grips in everything. So we're gonna do an overhand grip. So hands overhand, you start in your, since we're using dumbbells, you don't have to start from the ground. So you'll start from like a hang. So dumbbells will be just below your knees. You're going to deadlift up. And then as you come up, you're bringing your elbows up. So you have what normally we don't like to do, which is momentum. So you should be able to do heavier weights. So grab the heaviest weights that you have in your house. And that's what we're going to be using. So hopefully they're something spectacular. So let's see it with the actual dumbbells. So I'm going to start at a hang. So just like you would a hang clean. So start right at right below um, your knees. So nice flat back as we come up. It's like a simultaneously you're just bringing the weights up. So we're getting it's a nice full body exercise. So now that you're adding your legs into it, you should be able to do some substantial weight with this. But I also want good form. So if you start loose, if you're going a little bit too heavy and your back starting to round, we want to keep our, we want to keep our back nice and neutral. So stiffen up here, tighten our core. And then it might take a little bit to get that movement, that flow. But once you get it, you're going to be unstoppable. We're going 12, 10, 8, 8. Those eights, I want you going heavy, 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 heavy. All right, now that you are completely exhausted from those dead rows, we're going to take it down a nice notch and kind of do more of some isolation unilateral work with some single arm dumbbell rows so i think the biggest thing here is doing them correctly <laughs> i know <sighs> crazy so how i'm going to do it um this is all completely up to you some people like to use a bench like this i'm actually or some people don't use a bench and they're elevated up here I'm gonna have gonna be on a bench. My feet are going to be in a nice like let's say if you're jumping, that's generally like your athletic stance. <laughs> like if I jump and I land, that's my athletic stance. That's pretty much where I'm gonna start. One hand's gonna be on the bench, other hand will have the dumbbell. The big thing here is not so much about the elbow bend. So I want you to be pulling back towards your pocket. So the weight is going to come back towards your pocket, but I want this elbow back behind you. So if you're pulling here, see all that elbow bend, that's more bicep than anything. So we want less elbow bend 
and more pulling with the lat. So my elbow doesn't really bend all that much. And then by doing that, I'm able to get that elbow back behind me, which will then contract uh, those lats just a little bit more. Because a lot of times I'll see people just pulling just like this, like they're pulling a lawnmower. <laughs> like you're starting the lawnmower. That's not what we want because you don't start a lawnmower like this. So no lawnmower pulls. We want a nice sweeping pull and there's not, there's just really not a whole lot of elbow movement. Your elbow will be bent at the top, but pull that weight back towards your pocket and then try to get that elbow back behind you as high as possible. And then I like, just, you don't have to like stretch forward or really lean forward. Just let the weight go where it normally is. And right here, I'm already feeling a nice good stretch. And then when I pull back, we're pulling back towards our pocket. So not this, you'll see the difference in my elbow placement and like how much bend there is versus this. This, all I feel is my lats and my obliques. So that weight is really coming all the way out to that outer hip. Pull that weight all the way back to your hip, elbow back. So this is one of those exercises I want you to check your ego at the door. I think for me too, I used to do this, I used to get the 80s and I'm just like, I'm using every muscle in my body, like ton of bicep, but I thought like, hey, cool, everyone look at me, man, I'm doing 80s to 100, like I've seen people doing hundreds and stuff and girls like doing 100 pound dumbbell rows. It's like, eh, try this form and see if you can do hundreds with that. Let's just try that. How about that? You wanna try that? Listen, then you would impress me. If you're doing hundreds, with this form where you're not bending your elbow. I'll, if I bend my elbow and I do the lawnmower, you best bet I'll, I'll be getting those hundreds up right now. So this exercise to isolate your lats, I need you guys to just leave the egos behind. Don't worry about anyone else looking at you. Lucky for me, I only have my dog and she has no idea so let's check our egos at the door. Let's make nice, cool, strict uh, movements here where we're actually working the muscle and not working our egos. So again, these reps are going to go from a 12 to 10 to eight to eight. So obviously as the reps go down, weight goes up. So we're going pretty heavy on these. All right, the next exercise is probably something hardly anyone has done unless you follow John Meadows. So I actually got this exercise from John Meadows. If you don't know him, Mountain Dog, he's a beast. Um, but he is, just always has such a, like a cool array of different techniques to like hit different muscle groups. So we're gonna take a, a typical dumbbell pullover that you can either do on back day or chest day. Um, you do it different ways to target different things, but uh, we're gonna be doing a pullover, and this is gonna isolate your lats more than anything I've ever done, and I think this is the only way I'm ever gonna do pullovers on back day. So we're gonna be on the ground, on the floor, with two dumbbells, so one in each hand. Um, start, <laughs> definitely start very light till you get to to get the hang of it because it is it is a very strict completely isolating those lats it's gonna you're gonna feel it in your shoulders too because you need stability in your shoulders but that's always a good thing as well so and grab your dumbbells you're laying back arms are gonna start behind your head and then I'm gonna keep my hands in uh, an overhand position as I'm pulling. And the pulling motion, let me move those out of the way, isn't going to be very far. You're just coming from here to here. Cause any further, it's then gonna transfer to our chest. And mm, 
then we'll worry about chest on a different day. So the movement is just this to this. So it's, it's a very small movement and you can even do this probably with just like a rubber band or like not much weight at all. And you can feel your lats contracting. So contract your lats, or just even practice that when you're on the ground. Contract your lats and my arms move. So that is the basis of the movement. Now we're gonna add weight, which will then be pulling against. So obviously you'll have to pull a little bit harder. So with dumbbells, where'd they go? Come back. So dumbbells in your hands and we're just going from here to here. I think I grabbed a little bit heavy for demonstration purposes. <laughs> Let me grab lighter ones. Oh my God, what's wrong? All right, arms back behind your head. And then I'm gonna take my arms just a little bit wider than shoulders instead of like keeping them shoulder. We're gonna be a little bit wider, just like if you were doing a regular cable pull down, your arms are generally a little bit wider. So stopping right about there. And then try not to come all the way down to the ground because I don't want you relaxing. You want, I want you to keep tension on those lats the whole entire time. So you're gonna stop, you can touch the ground, but we're not going to rest on the ground. So here, to here. Oh yeah, this is all lats and some shoulders. You're gonna hit those front delts as well. So if you picture yourself standing um, at like a cable, you're doing that, that first initial pull basically. Because from here down, generally the weight transfers from shoulders to chest. So we're doing like that top, that really the top part of a pull, uh, like a straight arm pull down. So from there, we're going 10 to 12 there. And then we're going to go to a reverse incline. Now, if you don't have a incline bench, you can just totally do this bent over. Uh, but now our focus will be on supination. So we've done overhand, we've done neutral grip with the bent over rows. So now we're going to supinate. It's more like a rotational row. So I'm going to start in an overhand and then as I bring it back, you're going to supinate and twist those uh, wrists out. Thumbs point out, pinkies point in, palms facing forward and then squeeze those shoulder blades at the top as as much as you can so i want you trying to like pinch your shoulder blades together elbows are going to stay pretty tucked instead of we do wide rows which are going to hit our rear delts and our upper back so by keeping them nice and tight we're going to hit that center of our back and then also our lats by keeping those elbows close tuck together and try to get them back as far as possible so starting it overhand, and then as you come back, supinate. So with some dumbbells. And then hold for like a good second there at the top. So really squeeze those shoulder blades together. <sighs> and then obviously, if you don't, you don't have to use uh, an incline bench. You'll just do that from a bent over position. So if you don't have a bench to lean on, that just adds a little more isolation because anytime you're doing this, you'll be using your lower back. But by keeping your chest down <laughs> and pretty much not using your legs or anything. On a bent over, regardless of what you think, you're always using some other muscles. So this basically takes a lot of those muscles out of the play so that you don't need to use really heavy weights. So supinate, pronate. Just add a little rotation. You'll get a little bit of bicep pump here. 
and really draw those elbows back as far as you can. I don't know the reps. Ah, oh, okay, 10 to 12. So we're doing 10 to 12 dumbbell pullovers coming right here to the reverse supinated uh, rotational row. Also 10 to 12 rep range for that. And then we got one more exercise. Two more actually. exercise we got three sets here 12 to 15 of each um, so now we're going to be working the bottom portion so we just did the dumbbell pull downs or pull overs but it feels just like you would do, be doing a straight arm pull pull down we are working that top portion now we're gonna be working the bottom portion so I'm grabbing pretty decently heavy band um, it's what I used uh, with the pull pull ups um, you're going to be laying on your back. You're going to grab your band. And then I'm not actually going to, I'm just going to be putting my wrists in it. So have enough tension so there's tension right about where your face is. And then we're going to go all the way down. Well, actually, maybe I should grab it <laughs> in case it whips me. Huh. All right. So then we're coming all the way down. So we're doing that bottom portion. And then I want you keeping tension, so don't let your arms go all the way back because look, there's no tension at all. There's no tension on the rubber band. So find where there's tension. Tension is right about where my face is and then back down. So keep tension on, keep those elbow or uh, elbows locked. They can be slightly bent. They don't have to be straight. Um, that's the, the one thing when when I write like straight arm pull down, nothing's ever completely straight. It's, there's always a slight bend, but our arms are going to be straight, slight bend in our elbow, and then you're pulling all the way down with those lats. Again, keep the rubber band under control. Don't let it just wing you back up because otherwise you're going to be all the way back here. So keep control on the band the whole time. Stop with tension still on, and then down. Hold for a second. We're then gonna flip over, and it's very difficult when you only have dumbbells basically to work with, um, and you can do pull-ups all day, but it's hard to find that, that pull-down motion. Like, yeah, pull-ups are very similar, so I wanted a pull-down motion, and I found this, I don't even know who, I, I just came across uh, this variation. Um, you could also attach a band to the top of something and do a pull down, but we already did kind of a high row. So we're doing a prone, laying prone pull down. So if you've been following any of my body weight workouts, we do a lot of uh, like Superman pull downs to work those lats. So we're gonna face down on the ground you're basically going to do like a Superman as you pull back. So keeping those elbows nice and tucked, just like you would a pull down. And then hands can go overhand or underhand, however you want to do it. Hold for a second and then slow on the way back. And then again, I'm not letting all the tension off. So if you need to walk yourself back, walk yourself back because I want tension at the top. I want tension throughout the whole range of motion. So here, already still have some tension. So if you wanna keep your elbows slightly bent or pulling, and then you're just pulling down towards your chest and then back up. So then you'll get that same kind of motion that you would get from like a seated lat pull down. So really drive those elbows down, hold and squeeze and release slowly. So every part of today has been pretty much the same tempo throughout. So as fast as you are, you're contracting, you're relaxing at the same speed and then we're adding 
pauses on each rep. So especially with band work, because if you don't and you let you just let their band release, yeah, everything goes away, all your tension goes away. So it's especially important on all the band movements, slow, steady, controlled, pause, slow, steady, controlled, release. So all the way through. Three sets, 12 to 15 of each one. Slow and steady. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> All right guys, so that is back day dumbbell band. We'll pull up our, but you don't always need all the finest equipment to have a really good back day. It's thinking outside the box. Um, oh, thank you. Thinking outside the box and really focusing on slowing things down and feeling it. I think so many times, especially when you're using machines, we're not focusing on contracting and actually feeling the feeling it in where you're supposed to feel it. So focus on the contraction. So when you only have a little bit to work with, you only have some dumbbells, slow it down, focus on the contraction and it can make a world of difference. So make sure to like, subscribe, comment below. And if you're someone that maybe is struggling, maybe your gym is still not open or in fear of closing again, um, come to my website, dalenbailey.com. Link is below. I got home workouts, dumbbell only workouts, and gym workouts, all available for everyone to view. Uh, the first seven days are free, $7 a month after that. So come train with me and Kaya, and we'll get you jacked. And no matter where you train at, even if you have no equipment whatsoever, we're here to help. Thanks guys, see you later. <laughs>